Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you to another session of Pastor Doug's Virtual VIP a Midweek Bible Study. And so glad that you're joining me today. Um, this past message was about how worshiping with others changes you. And uh, I was really excited to share this message this week because I think the value of worship is, is often understated. We kind of get in the habit of, of just going to church and being there and trying to attend and thinking, okay, we're doing our part because I showed up. And um, what I wanted to tell you, it's far, far more than that. I want to give you a definition of worship. Uh, worship is expressing our love and gratitude to God for who he is, for what he's done, for what he has said, and what he's promised to do. And so it's a whole lot more than so showing up and singing a few songs. And, and oftentimes we find ourselves, and I do it with the, with the band and the, the singers and everything, kind of just listening to them and enjoying it. And that's okay too. But worship is, in, is involving yourself, and it's, it's the actual function of, of understanding uh, who God actually is. You know, often I've told you that uh, people who maybe don't believe in God, uh, I feel a lot of times don't believe because they have this misconception of who God actually is. And, and sometimes uh, that makes it really difficult to appreciate what God has done because they don't really know who he is. So just think about this, this concept of coming in to worship somebody that they really don't know who he is and they don't really appreciate what he has done makes it really difficult to make that, that kind of connection. And, and that seems really, really difficult to do. And, and I understand and I don't blame people for, for doing that. And so the, the big thing we got to look at is, is understanding who God is. So when we come to church, if you listen to the words of the songs, the songs are always about praise and adoration and what God has done and how he, how he really appeals to us. Look what it says in Mark 12, 29, 30. Now, this is a scripture I often use, and I use it because I think it's so valuable and so important. Jesus said this. He was asked, what's the greatest commandment? You've heard me do this. I do it all the time because I think it's so extremely valuable to what we're doing. He said this, the most important command of all is this one. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And so it tells us that we love him emotionally, physically, practically, and mentally. And so that is a process. That just doesn't happen once a week. And hopefully you come in and, and we open our songs. We call our band the worship team, and they're singing worship songs. But the whole process of church is about worshiping God. And it just doesn't work for one hour. I kind of said during the message, if you heard me, I said, how would you feel if God uh, attended to you and your needs and your situation for an hour each week? That's just what he did. He came in on Sunday mornings and at nine o'clock, I'll talk to you for an hour. And after that, hey, I'll see you next week. And that's kind of what we do oftentimes when we engage our relationship with God. We do that for an hour. We come to church. We feel really good about it. Hey, I made it to church. But uh, as you can see, that that will not be enough to cut it for your whole week. That's why we have to have midweek Bible studies. That's why we do devotionals on a daily basis. All of those kinds of things are really, really important as, as we show and, and, and give our worship back to God. And here's what's really important about this, I think, or one of the things anyway. This, this giving back to God is, is part of who we are. Uh, God says he made us in his own image. So God created us and he made you who you are and the way you think and how you feel. And he also built in us this need to worship something. Think about that. This need to worship something. It's designed that God is that something. God's that perfect fit of what we feel like is missing. And so as our focus is supposed to be worshiping God, if we don't have that, if we're not filling that with God, we will fill it with something. You think about this. We will fill that need to worship that dedicated part of our lives with something. It could be family. It could be a hobby. It could be a habit, both good and bad. It could be situations. Uh, it could be living for the weekends. It could be lots of different things because we are patterned and made that way. And so to be who, all who God wants us to be, we've got to love him and worship him. And in order to do that and understand that, you have to know and have the proper ideas of who God is. And I see that as the responsibility of the church. It's our responsibility to make sure that each week 
you are getting information that clearly defines who God is. Each week, you're getting information and seeing scriptures that defines exactly what God has done for you. Each week, you're getting uh, more and more knowledge about how much God loves you and how he's prepared this place for you called heaven. And I talk to you about what you got to do, the things you have to do to get there. It's all been done for you. All the arrangements have been made. The res reservations are there. Your name is written. All you have to do is do your part. What's your part? Your part is knowing, loving, and accepting Jesus Christ. And you do that on a daily basis, not just once a week for a few hours and you make your commitment, but you do that in a daily devotion. And the whole purpose of all of this information that we're sharing and that you're gathering and that's going into your head, going through your ears, it's, it's to make you stronger and to make you understand who God is. Think about this. And I do this with, with our outlines and everything. Well, I provide you information, right? I'll give you a scripture, for example, or a point on my outline. I'll give you that point. I'll give you that scripture. I not only say it to you, but I'll put it on the big screen for you to look at. And you can visibly with your eyes read it. Not only is it on the big screen, but I put it on a smaller piece of paper so you can take it with you. So you have the point that I'm trying to make, and I have the scriptures that back up that point. But if you understand from my perspective, from a pastor's perspective, we don't make the points. We have the scriptures that make the points for us. And we just share them with you. But the whole purpose is to let you know who God is, what he has done for you, how he feels about you. So let's take it even a step further. You take that outline, and I always leave some blanks there. So you have to fill it in. So now you you see it on the paper, you hear it with your ears, you see it on the screen, and now you're writing things in. Why? To help you gain knowledge and information and have that available to you. Because when the problems of your life come, you need to know who God is. You need to know what he has done for you. You need to know what he has said. And you need to know how he's going to support you and back you up in everything that you do and everything that you face. Look, this isn't rocket science. This is built for, for everybody, and everybody in every situation has the same opportunity to learn, to know, to love God the way he designed you to learn and to know and love him. It's all about loving God. You can't love something that you don't understand. You won't love something that you have a misconception about. If you think this is a mean and evil God that's here, it's going to be hard to love that God. The Bible clearly says, and Jesus Christ clearly said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, body, and mind. And then he said the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. If we can't love God and understand how God's love flows through us and what his love is all about, we will not be able to properly love our neighbors as ourselves. It begins with Jesus Christ. It begins with your connection with him. It begins with you acknowledging who he is and working on that love and that relationship that it's all about. And then when you feel that and you understand that and you start to know how much God loves you and what he has done for you, then that makes you better and easier at loving other people. Sometimes we've got to look past some of the problems. We've got to look past sometimes what they actually say. And realize that that is a creation of God that he has designed for me to love. And I do my best at it. You know, I love talking to you guys each week. And I'm really uh, glad that, that you take this time to view these studies with me. And I enjoy sharing with you. And this coming week at Faith Church is going to be a special Sunday. We are going to share with you and give you a, a, a brief inside rundown of what Finding Purpose with Ease is all about. If you were ever going to watch a Sunday service, this is the one to watch. This information that we're going to unfold, and we're going to unfold it throughout the beginning of this year, and then we're going to put it in place as we go, will be information that's never been shared before. It's never been created before. This has been created with our group. And uh, there's something special about it that I can't wait for you to see on Sunday. So God bless you. I love you. I'm so thankful for you, everything. I'm so grateful to be your pastor here at Faith Church, and I hope you'll stop in and see us on Sunday. If not, keep tuning in. God, uh, God loves Pastor Doug's virtual VIPs, and so do I. I love you guys. God bless you, and have a great day.